We value choice. Christians who invite people uh, to choose Jesus for themselves value choice. Methodists who appreciate free will value choice. Americans in our consumer culture and the way that we operate, we, we don't just value choice, we expect choice. This is how we know that we've made it, right? When we get to choose for ourselves the kind of lives that we will live, the kind of things that we will be. Perhaps this is why you and I love Walmart, because we value choice, or Target, or Amazon, or Google. More choices, the better. And you know whatever denies us choice, like sin, we hate it. Lack of money, we hate it. You know, people who deny us choice, we hate them. So when something like a pandemic shows up in our world and steals our choices, we feel that we've been wronged. We feel that we're less than we were before. Some of us are inconvenienced and we hate it, but the truth is that there are some in this moment who are even battling for their lives. Still others are forced to work jobs that put them in harm's way because they have no other choice, because they have no other way. But sometimes, what limits our choices, God can use to set us free. At the end of the book of Joshua, all of Israel is gathered to make a choice. And Joshua says to Israel, to all of the tribes, who are you going to choose? Are you going to serve the gods uh, that out here that you've experienced in the country? Or are you going to serve the Lord? And Joshua says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. My father, who's a Calvinist, loves to point out right here in this scripture that the household doesn't get to choose who they will serve. I'm going to agree with him, and I'm going to send that even to Israel and extend it to them, because even Israel doesn't get to choose who they will serve. The people, of course, they say that they're going to serve the Lord, but Joshua says, you can't do that. The moment they make a choice, Joshua says, no. Everything that you do that is wrong, every, every idol that you may put up before God, God's going to remember all that stuff. And even though I'm giving you the choice today, even though I'm going to put this rock over here as a witness to your choice, even though you will choose right now to serve the Lord, you're not going to be able to do that. You won't really get to make this choice. Paul wrestles with these problems, same kind of thing in Romans chapter 7. Paul says uh, in Romans 7, he says, uh, look, I, I, I do the things that I don't want to do. I don't do the things that I know are good. Who is going to free me from this bondage, from this slavery? Now, I don't need to read all of the book of Romans, but between there and chapter 12, Paul makes this argument. Go read it. And, and he, he makes this beautiful statement at the beginning of chapter 12 that's worth lifting up. He says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Despite my father's appreciation for predestination, my parents were always really good at giving me choices. Choices that would empower me, choices that would help me understand the consequences of my decisions. I want you to hear a good word today. God loves to even use our limitations to set us free. We are still celebrating Easter, a season that began with the holiday to celebrate Jesus and his ability to choose life and love even in the face of sin and death. We have that kind of choice before us every day, every moment, and you can make that choice. I'm not talking about ignoring the limitations that you feel are denying you your God-given rights. I'm talking about shaping them into a life-giving and life-offering, loving choice. As for me and my household, we are choosing to serve the Lord. Don't be conformed to the world, but by being transformed by the renewing of your mind, may we truly find what is good and acceptable and perfect with our God. May we transform our limitations into service to the Lord. Let's pray together. Thank you, God, that you are going to use even the limitations we face today or tomorrow. And you can turn them into new life. May it be so for us. Amen.